What's going on, y'all? What's up? What's up? What's up? It's good old Saturday. I'm out here getting it in. Gotta go knock out some commercial properties. And also, I have to do a fair amount of residentials. I'm trying to stay ahead so I can uh, travel to this GIE Expo in a few weeks. And um, yeah. How are you guys doing? I hope the season went well for you. It's good old October. We got another month before things literally start shifting and slowing down. As far as the calls start slowing down. I can't wait. <laughs> I love what I do, but sometimes we need a break. And I need that break. But on the flip side, I wanted to make a short video just to talk to you guys about uh, something I did this year that um, I should have probably did differently. I'm not saying that I regret it, but in the same token, it was a learning experience. So at the beginning of this year, I decided not to do any marketing as far as paid marketing. No Facebook ads, no next door ads, no Craigslist ads, no type of marketing, period, just because of the um, the state, uh, the presence that my business have on it already. Uh, my business listing it ranks pretty decent within my area. And also, I get an abundance amount of calls all throughout the summer, spring. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to put this thing to the test to see if my business listing really uh, alone can support my business growth without actually having to spend any marketing dollars. Um, yes, my phone still rung, rang, 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 and I still was able to pick up a fair amount of customers. But the thing is, when people find your business online or Facebook or Instagram, wherever online, more than likely, they're not always like a next door neighbor to the customer that you already service. And what I mean by that is, for example, I was working, when was it? I think it was Wednesday this week. And I had my, no, last week, I had my wife with me. And she was just kind of, you know, hanging out with me for the day. She timed me. It, it took me 11 minutes to, since I pulled up and actually mowed the property and got back in the truck. Um, she timed me and it was 11 minutes that it took me to uh, complete that property. She's like, man, this right here is ideal uh, customer as far as the time it takes to maintain these properties. It's like, you should be trying to get all the customers in this neighborhood. And I was like, yeah, you're right. But me, I'm so passive. I uh, forgot where I came from as far as the beginning when I started um, knocking doors and, you know, trying to get people with my push more, trying to mow on. So I forgot that piece. So she had a card. She was like, hey, go put a card in the, uh, in the door. So I went and put a card in the door. I kid you not that that prospect called me the next day um, saying that she got my card. She noticed I service the neighbor and I do a good job. When can she get on my schedule? I explained to her my annual contract and she was on board with everything. So with that being said, um, I could be saying no to a lot of the people that call me. That's not directly in the neighborhoods that I want to be. They may not be exactly in the neighborhood, but I'm not accepting people that's five, four, even three miles out. They're usually like within a two mile radius um, for that service area. So the, the what I learned from that is I need to get back to actually um, canvassing, passing out flyers and marketing that way because in reality, it'll save drive time i'll be able to hire employees and we'll be able to finish they'll be able to finish properties on a, a proficient route <laughs> you know a well planned out route and that's kind of how you can make money in the business it's, it's a struggle when you're accepting people and even if it's the next neighborhood over or a few neighborhoods over um it takes time to drive to them you know get everything loaded up go to the next property not to say i'm doing a bunch of driving around but the proximity of each customer needs to be much, much better to actually grow the business to where I want it to go. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to make my commitment, even though it's October, I'm going to start marketing now. It's October 2nd. I'm going to start marketing right now for whatever services offered throughout the course, the off season. But I'm not really, folk, I'm not banking on the off season, period. Anybody who gets started in the lawn care business, do not, <laughs> unless you're up north and you're snow plowing, if you're in the south, do not 
uh, plan all your uh, services and scheduling, thinking that the off season is going to be great as well, because it doesn't work out that way all the time, especially, you know, if you're not marketing and things like that the right way, it doesn't work out in your favor. Um, so definitely find something that, you know, you can get into throughout the off season as far as, you know, another service that does still uh, require some, some maintenance. But anywho, find something else to be busy around the off season because it gets slow. When I say it gets slow, it gets really slow. And that's the purpose of me going annual contract based with my customers. Um, so I told my a lot of my clients, I told them on, the annual, on my contract that basically we mow all the way from March all the way to the end of October on a weekly basis. Um, throughout the off season, November, December, that's when we go to a bi-weekly, a possibly even monthly visits um, for services. So either way I go, I'm gonna still have a, a fair amount of income coming in based off of all my customers who's on contract. And I hope to do that again this year. Um, well, next year, moving forward, contract, 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 because people are gonna keep calling. People are gonna keep calling, and how can I make space for the right customers if I'm accepting the wrong ones? The, not to say the wrong ones, but the not ideal ones. I need to be accepting the customer that's literally within the, the neighborhoods that I'm servicing by marketing to them, not forgetting the marketing to market to them. I need to be servicing the right customers. That's that's how I, I'm, I'm trying to grow within the next year. Um, this year was awesome though. Although the employee thing was a hiccup, I found a lot of peace this year. I found a lot of little joy in what I'm doing. I, I got my, my love back for what I'm doing. Not to say I'm gonna, you know, completely leave lawn care. I love doing this lawn care and landscaping. However, I do have other things that I'm working on as well. And I'll kind of feed you guys in on that when I when I actually get more situated. But I've been working on it for a few months now and learning learning a new trade. But it's alongside the green industry. I'll feed you guys in on it um, in a little while. But I just wanted to make, you, make a little short video, touch base with you guys and tell you guys to make sure you market, market, market. Even when you think you got all the customers in the world, you know, continue to market, market, market because you, you want to continue to have consistent leads coming into the business to where you can get choose out the right ones that fit the business description versus uh, picking up customers that, you know, that's not in the right space. So that's all I got for you guys. I'm going to finish drinking my coffee and I'm about to be, get ready to pull up to my property here. Um, I just wanted to share my thoughts for the day on this good old Saturday. It's like 70 degrees right now. And I'm enjoying it. But keep grinding, keep getting it. Later, guys.